um, they present, present with um, metastatic disease. And one of the most common places for osteosarcoma to hide out is in the lungs. And once osteosarcoma spreads to the lungs, it's very difficult to treat. Um, people who are treated for osteosarcoma are being treated with drugs from 30 and 40 years ago. Wow. And it's, um, I've been told by the medical profession that it's one of the most difficult types of cancers to cure. And that's why we are so blessed. Oh, you know, yes. Jacqueline was, is doing perfect. And she responded well to the treatment, and she's doing great. Um, but many people that are faced with osteosarcoma are faced with um, amputation, mm -hmm. surgeries, things that will forever change their life. And anything, a anyone that goes through any type of a cancer treatment knows just how brutal the treatment is. But with osteosarcoma... Um, there's little research done, so they're not quite sure exactly which is the best way to treat it. And there are many children that have lost their lives. You know, she started oh, yes. treatment with six people. Um, four of them had osteosarcoma. And sadly, some of them didn't make it. And to know that at any age is horrible. Oh, yeah. But to be a young girl, to be a young, innocent teenager, and to see that happen, is it's brutal. Well, and to be the teen that's digesting that and right. continuing to exactly. say that I can, I can move on and I'll be strong um, and I'm going to survive this right. is, and you never is think a testament it's, to her. And you never think it's going to happen to you. No. You know, you're going about your life, you're going to work, you're going to school, taking care of the kids, rushing around, and then all of a sudden you get a tap on the shoulder that says, hey, guess what? What you knew yesterday is no longer what you know today. You know, nationally, and, and, and we're going to talk more about Jackie as we go along, because she's our angel today, and, and we're so happy. We, my mom used to call them angels in assignment, so mm -hmm. those who are here on this side uh, of the earth, to, to remind us of, of, you know, perhaps our purpose or um, perhaps telling our story to others. Right. So, you know, when we look at the healthcare system and someone would say, well, you know, I can only imagine that when you were looking at hospital bills, you know, they the numbers are probably just so large. I can't even imagine what it would be like Out of to control. treat someone. You know, we talk about, we're used to hearing more about breast cancer, prostate cancer, um, heart disease, mm -hmm. the big ones, and they are big ones because they affect so many people and oftentimes are preventative or early treatment and diagnosis is key. So we always wanna tell people, you know, have those regular physicals, get those checkups. In the case of your children, get those simple um, exams every year. We were just yes. hearing recently about, um, across the country, student athletes who had fallen and had cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. And they were talking recently about defibrillators uh, in the schools and on the, on the fields and also having uh, the ability to know CPR. Correct, right. Can save a life. But what they were also saying, it was interesting, is that it, is it, to us, any life is precious. If you ask a parent or someone, you know, do you test every single child? What was interesting was a baseline physical, they said sometimes can detect a heart murmur right. or a problem, even if every child doesn't have an EKG, right? Which is mm -hmm. going to look at the, the, the way at which your heart operates. Just to have those school physicals, get the, you know, get what you can get done. These are hard times. Very hard times. People are struggling. Very, very much so. I would just urge every parent out there to pay attention. Pay attention. When they say something. When because she wasn't just, it, it's not as if she had collapsed. She did you not know collapse. What I'm she had appeared to be in completely good health. Um, there were no indications that she was not doing well. Um, just three months prior, she had gone to Europe with her grandmother, walked, <laughs> never complained of any pain, and within a couple of weeks, she started to look a little pale. Hmm. She had gone to her school nurse several times before she had even addressed it with us and told the nurse that she had pain in her leg, and the school nurse gave her an ice pack and sent her on her way. Right. And by the hmm. time she had told us about this pain in her leg, um, the, the tumor was huge. And God only knows what would have happened if we didn't take yes. her immediately to the doctor and have her x-rayed. She didn't complain much, and she said one day, oh, I have a little pain in my leg. And most kids complain, oh, I got a pain here, I have a pain there. Yes. And 
You can't poo-poo these things. No, you can't. And you have to and, – and I think that you also have to um, – you have to be an advocate um, in in a positive way. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, there's the old saying that the squeaky wheel, you know, gets the oil. You know, we hope that that's more through dialogue and less through, you know, anger. But there are moments when, you know, in the healthcare system, I think you you've got to speak up. You you have to be an advocate if you're a caregiver. You have to be an advocate um, for you know for the very young. Um, because in this case, you know, it, it really is a miracle because age is, is on her side. I mean, right. the resilience of the body, the right. youthfulness of the body, and just, of course, an abundant amount of blessings. But, you know, she wasn't complaining, crying, falling out. You Not know, it all. wasn't that kind of thing. And here it was so deadly. Exactly. And, and the shame is that we sit here today and we say that we're lucky. We shouldn't be lucky. Every child should have the same results that she had. It shouldn't be based on luck whether or not treatment is going to work. The truth of the matter is there just isn't enough funding for pediatric cancer. So, (laughs) and whether and whether or not you can even afford to to continue to have treatments and continue to go to um, some of the preeminent facilities that we have uh, in this part of the country whether that be, you know, sort of the Sloan Ketterings and the Robert Wood Johnsons and, and so forth, it costs money. And that's why we're really doing, you know, shows like this to really say, you know, there are so many ways to support people because you never know when that person's going to be you. And I think that people, you know, we all tend to assume sometimes during those moments, well, support means that either I don't have a job or, you know, I'm receiving public assistance. Not so. How many families, and I'd like to know from you, Glenn, I bet you that, you know, the children that are benefiting from the dance and from your organization, there is no cap on, because this is a working family, it doesn't mean people are uh, at the poverty level, so to speak, in this country that they don't need help. We're talking about working families. We're talking about, you know, this is a, this to me, this is a new world we're out there looking at. Mm-hmm. People need help. Especially people, someone, well, they're working. They have insurance. A lot of times people's insurance today only covers a portion of their That's expenses. Correct. Or you cap, you max out. Mm-hmm. On, on an illness like this we're talking about with Jackie, we're talking about bills in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Probably Are close we to correct? A mil- probably close to a million. Okay. And insurance doesn't cover how much it costs to go back and forth for treatment. It doesn't cover parking. It doesn't cover meals. It doesn't cover child care for your other kids that are home. It doesn't cover time off from your job. I had to leave my job. Okay. Insurance didn't pay me for that. But Embrace Kids helped a lot. Glenn, jump in here. Tell us the reality of the types of families that need help and what are the children that benefit? What types of illnesses are we dealing with? What are some of their stories? Well, we're in New Jersey, which is one of the most diverse states in this country. So we have a a very diverse patient population that cuts across all all socioeconomic boundaries. We have families who are in good shape financially, some that are not. We have single parents, some families with one or two children, other with others with six or seven. So the financial assistance that Embrace Kids provides, and that's only one piece, one sliver of what we do, um, that is important. But every family, regardless of how they're doing financially or their support system, they need additional assistance through our counselors, the child life specialists, a nutritionist, the nurses, all of the support people they need regardless of their own economic situation. But maybe even more powerful than that is Embrace Kids is an advocate, a friend. We are, we strive to be the brightest lighthouse in the darkest storm Mm. of a family's life. That's very powerful and valued because what happens when a child has cancer is the fam- many families feel isolated. That is because the people in their lives, some people avoid them because in life people avoid that which is uncomfortable. Right. So parents will, other parents will avoid our families because they see their worst nightmare playing out. And mm-hmm. sometimes I think when people don't know what to say. I think sometimes oh. they don't know um, their discomfort with not knowing sometimes causes them 
to feel like, well, I don't want to intrude or I don't know what to say or what to do, but it's okay. It's okay. And it's even okay to admit that. It's even okay to say, you know, I don't know what to do, but I can certainly remember, you know, growing up, it was that, you know, you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. You can't do nothing Mm -hmm. is what they, you know, my folks used to say. You can't, you just, whether that's bringing up a plate of food um, you know, dropping off cards, giving, you know, helping to provide with uh, some child care and picking up the slack for the other three kids. You know, it's the smallest of things that make the biggest um, the biggest difference, I think, to families who are going through um, a tragic situation because it's sort of like all hands on deck. You don't know what the next day is going to be like, I think. All hands on deck. Yeah. You know, are they going to make it through this surgery, then they made it through that, and then what's next? And it's just such heightened emotions mm-hmm. for you that, you know, just, you know, neighbors stopping by when they can just lets you know that you're loved. That's still, you know, a human emotion, and it sounds to me like Embrace Kids gives out a whole lot of love. So there's services but that comes in the form, too, of certainly, I think, a lot of love. Tell us about Embrace Kids. And, and if someone is out there, is it is it purely cancer, kids with cancer, Glenn, or is it kids with other types of diseases? Tell us how if someone is, is challenged with something, um, when should they call? How can they um, find out if, if this is um, an organization that's for them? Sure. Embrace Kids Foundation supports families whose children have cancer, sickle cell disease, and all of the other blood disorders, of which there can be many, many different types of rare blood disorders. And we uh, help families in a number of different ways. Embrace Kids was uh, founded now 20 years ago. We're just about to celebrate our 20th anniversary. Many congratulations. Thank you. Uh, We're going to be doing a great beach party for the kids in 